about what it was like. 1970, you're what, 19, 20 years old? I was 20, yeah. Yeah, you're working, you get a job at Abbey Road, and suddenly you're working on Apple Records, you're working with John Lennon, you're working with Yoko, you're working with George, you went on to work with Paul. What was that like? 20 years old and you're working with four of the biggest names in the world. <laughs> um, well, what was it like? I mean, dare I say it, I disappoint you all, it was a job. <laughs> um, I, I got the job at Abbey Road. Can you hear me in this? Is this all right? Yeah, good. Uh, it's, it's all out there, too much reverb on the voice. <laughs> um, yeah, I got the job in February, and I think uh, Easter, this is 1970, Easter, kind of Easter bank holiday, because um, there was a, a secretary, a woman who sort of told you what sessions you would do, Vera, her name was, Vera, Vera Samuel, and she said, uh, John, can you work Easter, can you work Good Friday over Easter bank holiday um, with, uh, with George Harrison? And I said, yeah, I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so there I was, a tape op, and I'd only, I'd only been there. Uh, maybe I should explain what a tape op does, because some people don't know what, quite what tape is. So in those days, oh, it's still the same maybe in these days, um, you have the producer, you have what's called the balance engineer, who's the engineer that controls the mixer, controls the balance of all the different instruments. He turns the knobs. No one else touches the mixer except the balance engineer. And in the same way, no one else touches the tape recorder except for the tape op. So the tape op's job was really to take command of the tape, which of course is precious because if you destroy it or if it messes up or breaks, then you just got to record it again. You know, it's all over. There's no sort of undo button if anything happens on the tape. So it's a full on responsible job being a tape op. And also you have to, you have to be good at it because you have to be quick. You know, you have to, if someone says, you know, go to the second verse, and you have to know where the second verse is on the song, on the tape, on the timer, and go there immediately. And similarly, when someone says stop, you have to suss out what's going on in the room and whether the person telling you to stop is actually means stop or carry on. Because very often, the first thing you do, if someone says stop, and you stop the tape, and everyone looks around and goes, what do you stop for? <laughs> <laughs> and so you kind of learn being a tape op, but it's quite a responsible job, really. Yeah, I'll bet. Um, and, you know, kind of like if you want to go to the toilet, you have to put your hand up, and the session stops, because no one else will, will run, the, uh, run the tape. So I'd been in the job for, I don't know, a few months, really, and was dead keen to get on. And uh, George Harrison came in with Phil Spector, Ringo, Klaus Vorman, and I think the first two days we did some demos. Demos being Klaus and Ringo and George playing and Phil Spector. And we recorded loads of tracks. You can get it all now on the box set, of course. And, you know, I didn't realise all this. It was, I, it was only through the, the recent box set that all that memory came back of um, what we actually did, you know. Anyway, the follow, after two days, the following day, suddenly the room was full of people. You know, there was, um, how many musicians? I think there was like 12 or 13. For a start, there was two drummers, uh, Ringo and Alan White. And so Alan White had played with, uh, on Instant Karma and played with, um, you know, various people. Later on, he joined Yes, you know. And then suddenly, um, the room was full of Americans and it was what became Derek and the Dominoes. So we had two drummers, we had Jim Gordon, from Derek and the Dominoes, we had Carl Radel from, from Derek and the Dominoes, plus um, Klaus Vorman, and loads of piano players, loads of piano players. We had, um, what's his name, Gary Brooker, Gary Wright. Mm, mm. You know, someone said, oh, can you plug in the Wurlitzer electric piano? So I went out and sort of tested it, and Phil Spector goes, can you play piano? Do you want to play on this track? And I'm like, no, no, I can't play, really. And it was you mean, basically... You gun to your head and say, play! Yeah, yeah. Any, any, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I've got to say, with Phil Spector, actually, I never saw any guns. Yeah, good. I never saw any drinking, That's good. either. He was pretty sober. I don't know if he was taking pills, but he was, he was great. He was really in control of the session. You know, he was, the, he was the producer. He was the man. Like, nothing happened. Everyone looked at him 
at the end of the take to see if it was any good. And he gave all the instructions on the talk back. And he would stop a take and go, oh, yeah, bad finger. Second guitarist, you've got four guys playing acoustic guitar. And he'd say, oh, second guitarist, you're playing a different rhythm. And they go, oh, yeah, I was just going to try something out. No, don't try anything out. Just play what you're meant to play. You know, so he was controlling the orchestration and everything. And, of course, it was all made up at the time. Like, every, every day we'd do a different song. And they'd kind of jam it, I suppose, until we got a good take. You know, there was arrangements, quite tight arrangements. Um, and, of course, what you hear on All Things Must Pass is as it happened, really. I mean, you know, it was... Um, how many weeks? I think it was about four weeks, maybe five weeks recording, nearly every day, a couple of days off. Uh, so it's all pretty intensive, you know, and you never knew who was going to be in the studio, you know, who was going to turn up. Um, anyway, so that was my summer. And then come September, uh, it was John and Yoko, Plastic Ono Band. And although I'd never met John and Yoko before, they were great. I mean, they were really really friendly, great people, really. George was a little bit, with George Harrison, he was a little, not standoffish, but I never really had a conversation or really sort of had eye contact. <laughs> so it's kind um, of slightly aloof, but John's a little a bit more bit. kind of homely and ordinary and yeah, Liverpool, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I suppose so. And Yoko was just there all the time, really. And, of course, that, that record was just John, Klaus and Ringo. Um, John sometimes on piano, sometimes on guitar. Um, and it was great. And then one day it was like John came in and said, right, we're going to do Yoko's record today. And so <laughs> I don't know if you ever heard uh, Yoko's version, the side of Plastic Ono Band, but it's, um, it's pretty wild because it's, um, it's them jamming, really. It's a yeah. slow blues and a fast blues. And they would play until the tape ran out, you know, like 32 minutes until the tape ran out. Oh, that's enough. And then you'd listen back endlessly. By endlessly, I mean two days, 12 hours a day, play it again, play it again, play it again. Um, and then they'd edit it. And they'd, Yoko would make notes of what's... This is her record, by the way, and make notes of what the best bit. And then I would have to edit all the bits together, which would take another two days. And then we'd mix it with loads of echo delays. You know, if you hear the drums, they've always got that... Dum, 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 with John loved reverb, didn't he? There's a lot of kind of echo in Reverb like and delays, yeah. 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 You know, they did a, what do they call it, a stripped down or naked version yeah. Yeah. Of, um, of Double Fantasy. Mm. I don't know if anyone's ever heard that, because it's really rubbish. Because uh, it's ho horrible. I yeah. have it. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> it's someone, a horrible record. Uh, you know, someone said, you know, can you mix it again without any effect on John's voice? Because we want to hear his, uh, his pure voice. This is what Yoko said. And, of course, John hated that. He wanted effects. He always wanted... Put some more echo in the ha in the cans, man. You know, can't, more, can't hear the echo in the cans. So he wanted to sing with all that on, you know. Is this about the time he started calling you Mr. Licky? <laughs> Licky, that's right. <laughs> when the record came out, if anyone wants to check, when the record came out, I was very lucky to get a credit, actually. It, it said um, John Licky. They spent, spelt my name wrong, L-I-C-K-I-E. And, I kind of uh, always thought that was a joke with John because John liked to play on words and he was just, you know... No, like, it was just someone at the pun. record company, someone at the record company. But I was going to get some badges made up, actually, that said, Lennon called Lecky Licky. <laughs> I'm selling them in the foyer if you want. No. Well, 